How poetic is it that the first feature on today's show is a piece about Josh Anderson and a trade to the Oilers, and the second part of today's show is focusing on another name that has been linked with Anderson for a while now, Max Domi. We had highlighted in the previous video that Josh Anderson, a Montreal Canadiens guy, was acquired by Montreal in a Max Domi trade a few months ago. Months ago? It was a year ago, right? Over a year ago, I want to say? And that initial trade with Max Domi and Josh Anderson was a pretty big one, because the Montreal Canadiens were trading away a guy in Max Domi who was seen as somewhat of a more valuable option than Anderson. This was mostly circumstantial, because Anderson was injured during the time the trade went down, he had only come back for a short amount of time, and he only had four points in 20-something games that he played with Columbus that year, but Max Domi was seen in the eyes of many people as just a little bit better. Now, this video is not going over that trade, even though I kind of spent the first minute recapping that trade for anybody who was unaware, but Max Domi is our subject of today's second feature. We're talking about an article on Sportsnet. Hey, guess what? It's the staple himself, Elliot Friedman, coming out here with the latest edition of the 32 Thoughts piece. The Oilers are making a serious attempt at getting Evander Kane published a few days ago. The link will be in the description as always. Our thought of focus is number 14. As Boston welcomes to Rask back, I wonder if Max Domi makes any sense for Boston. Now, this is our topic. Max Domi. Boston Bruins. Can we see a trade over here? I mean, the thought that we're pulling this video topic from is only one sentence long, but I do think there is a pretty interesting conversation to have when it comes to Domi and the Bruins. Now, Domi, if we go over the profile right here, 26 years old, 5'10", 192, he's a center left-wing player signed till the end of this season. He's making $5.3 million this year. And when it comes to Domi and the trade status of how everything has gone down, that contract is pretty much the biggest indicator as to where things are going. And if we go over onto Daily Faceoff, this is what Frank Saravelli wrote about Domi a few days ago. He is the ninth player on Daily Faceoff's 20 trade target list. Here's what he has to say. Uh, yes, a third Blue Jacket inside the top 10. There's no doubt the Blue Jackets are interested in moving Domi to a suitor before the deadline as an expiring contract. Properly slotted, Domi could be a fantastic addition for a playoff team in a middle six role. He is three years removed from a 28-goal, 72-point campaign in Montreal, and he has undoubtedly been underwhelming in Columbus. If there is a silver lining, though, it is that Domi has remained productive this season, and he has done it all at even strength with relatively limited ice time. That is indeed the case here, and the scoop pretty much on Max Domi, as his season a few years ago in Montreal, his first year with the Habs after being traded away for Alex Galchenyuk, 72 points, 82 games played, that was a lifetime ago pretty much, it feels like that in a sense. And Max Domi this season, while he wasn't always super great with Columbus, at least this year he's at 16 points in 24 games played, 8 goals, 8 assists. Let's do the math on that right here. 16, divvy, 24, multiplied out by 82. He's on pace for 55 points, that's not terrible. On pace for about 27 goals, 27 assists-ish. So, it's certainly a step up from what he has done in the previous few seasons, however, it is not better than that 28-goal, 72-point campaign he had in Montreal all those years ago. The Columbus Blue Jackets have not really been the best team this season, and so when it comes to them wanting to trade away a whole bunch of guys, there's a reason why Frank Saravelli has so many Blue Jackets in the top 10 of his trade list for January, and Domi just happens to be one of them. Now, whether or not Boston is that team, that is something that remains to be seen, but I do kind of go out there and see a little bit of what Friedman is talking about here. Jake DeBrusque is likely on his way out in Boston, and while I'm not going to go out there and suggest that a DeBrusque for a Domi trade would make the most sense, Domi is a guy who can play on that left-wing spot. If you trade away a DeBrusque, he can play behind Marsh and he can play behind Taylor Hall, and in a middle six role on a team like Boston that already kind of has that feistiness within their game, it would, in my opinion, complement Domi pretty well. We know Domi likes to play like a pest. We know he can get under the opponent's skin. He's been doing that for years in Arizona, in Montreal, and sort of in Columbus too. 
And the reason why I say sort of is because there have been some really weird things with Domi and the Blue Jackets from Tortorella putting this guy on the fourth line to not giving him any playing time, even this season. Frank Saravelli writes out it's mostly done at even strength, Domi and his production. So even though he is at a pretty reasonable stat line, it becomes a lot more impressive when you say, okay, this guy's only playing like 13 minutes a game. And I know what you're kind of thinking, okay, if he goes over to Boston, it's not really like he's going to get an extended role, isn't he? Like, you're playing behind Taylor Hall, you're playing behind David Pasternak, or excuse me, Brad Marsh and Pasternak's on the right, I forgot. This is kind of the entire reason why Jake DeBrusque wanted to leave in the first place, because the development that he had was not really all too sufficient, his playing time has been unsatisfactory, and it's why he's been in these conversations of a trade for the past year and a bit now. And so, Domi heading over to Boston wouldn't really get any better of a fate, in my opinion. However, he would be an upgrade over DeBrusque. Like, if you're going to go out there and try to improve your team, DeBrusque for Domi, I think you're improving your team. Domi also does have that expiring contract like a Jake DeBrusque, so while you may want to get rid of a DeBrusque and trade him away because he already asked for a trade and because he is also an expiring asset, at the very least, Domi to me seems like a big upgrade over DeBrusque and the services that he provides. So if Boston wants to go out there and make one last push while they still have Bergeron, while they still have all these other guys on their team, maybe Max Domi could be that guy. Timeline-wise, we already said, okay, it kind of fits, he's 26 years old already, he's probably not going to be getting any better anytime soon. I don't really see him getting 70 points ever again in the NHL, to be honest, although I'm open to surprises. And we also talked about the stylistic fit as well, Domi and the way that he plays, I think would be much more appreciated in Boston than it has been in Columbus with the likes of Tortorella and all that, 13 minutes of ice time a game, etc. Now, the reason Domi wouldn't be played in Boston is not because Tortorella and the coaching staff just doesn't like him, it's more likely going to be because Taylor Hall and Marshan are ahead of him. And those are two pretty okay guys, so I definitely don't think it's a bad thing per se. Now, what could a trade look like? That is the one part that we haven't touched on in this video. Domi, to me, is a guy that could go out there and fetch a pretty okay haul. Last time, he was traded from Montreal alongside of a draft pick for the rights to Josh Anderson. Now, you have to remember, when he was traded last time, it was the rights for Domi as well, not Domi the player. He wasn't under contract at that time. Last time you want to go over and see a real trade go down, it was Domi for Galchenyuk, and that one... I mean, Galchenyuk was seen as a pretty reasonably valuable name back then, and I mean, I guess the trade was pretty good for Montreal in the short term because he had 70 points, Domi did, immediately after. But Domi should not be too expensive. I think if you're going to go out there as a Boston team that's trying to make a splash, we've already seen all the rumors for other guys. Lawson Kraus is in there, Jacob Chitrin. Players from Arizona, oddly enough, happen to be the main target for Boston because Domi was from there too. But still... When it comes to a first-round pick, I'm not really too sure if Domi is good enough to fetch a first, maybe at the very least a B-tier prospect, a second for sure. It's a lot easier to label the picks in my opinion, because for Boston, their prospect pool is... Ay, ay, ay. It's not really the best in my opinion. Like, you have guys that I do like. Oscar Steen is over there. He's doing well in the AHL. Fabian Liesel is a beast for the Vancouver Giants. You still have John Beecher tearing things up, and there are indeed some other guys that I do think could see some form of value. It's just Boston doesn't really have that bona fide number one caliber prospect, unless, of course, you count Fabian Liesel, which, for the sake of argument, I'm probably not going to in this video. Boston's just got a lot of B, C tier prospects, and if you can coagulate a few of those and throw them over to Columbus in a Max Domi trade, I think this is the rare case where you can just go franchise, be a GM mode on EA Sports, where you propose something to Columbus for Domi and they say no, and then you say, okay, well, how about we add on a John Beecher, and they say, okay, that's better, but still not enough, and then you say, okay, well, we'll add on a Jack of Sean, too, and then they say, okay... You're almost there, but not quite, and then you say, okay, we'll add on a fourth, and it's like, okay, there. Boston is one of those teams where I feel like they would honestly be okay with doing that, mostly because the prospect depth they do have isn't really the deepest, and their commitment to winning now while they still have Bergeron appears to be pretty significant. So whether or not Domi is that piece that gets that done, who really knows? But talk to me in the comments, what do you think about this entire idea over here? Domi on the trade block? 
For sure he is. According to Frank Saravelli, he has been there for a while now. Elliot Friedman says that he feels like Boston might be a fit, or he's wondering at the very least if Boston could be a fit. Talk to me in the comments if you're a Columbus Blue Jackets fan. What would you want for Max Domi? You gotta remember, he's expiring this offseason, so he might not be worth as much as he has been in the past. However, he is still valuable enough on the ice to potentially fetch you a decent haul. So, if you're a Blue Jackets fan, talk to me in the comments what is it that you want for a Domi. If you're a Boston Bruins fan, would you want this guy on your team? If so, tell me the most that you would be willing to pay for him. If not, tell me why in the comment section below as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye. <laughs>